If you've been following the channel for a while, you will know I'm a big proponent for Waylon. Whether it works for you right now or not, there is no debate that X11 is dying or dead already. But if we're all going to have to use Wayland at some point or another, I think it's important to take a look at where it is right now and what it's still missing, whether it's from the protocol itself or the implementation of Wayland in desktops and applications. So let's look at Wayland, what works, what will never work and what we can expect to work in the future. And let's look at this segue to our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Squarespace and you probably have heard about them by now, but if you haven't, just know that they're your all-in-one solution to build your own website, however complex or simple you want it to be. You can completely customize the website to look and feel and have the features that you want. You have a big selection of templates and then you can rearrange them by just dragging and dropping blocks into place. You can change the general colors, you can add new pages and you have a big library of modules like a complete online shop with online payment or a members only area, a video gallery. You can even pick your own domain name and book it from Squarespace and they even have a module to design your own logo. So if you need a website but you don't really know how to get started or you don't have the time or the technical skills, just head over to squarespace.com slash the Linux experiment or click the link in the description below and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. Now to begin with, let's give a small refresher on X11 and Wayland. So up until relatively recently, all Linux desktops used the X server, also called X.org or X11. It's a venerable piece of software that predates even the first release of the Linux kernel by almost a decade. It has served us well to help us actually display things on our monitors. The panels, the icons, the windows and more are all drawn by X11. It has a few advantages like network transparency, meaning that a program can run on one computer but display its window on another. But X11 is virtually unmaintained now. It was never designed to support modern hardware and modern hardware configurations like HDR, variable refresh rates, different DPI between different monitors and stuff like that. The code is also considered pretty nightmarish to work with, with a lot of potential vulnerabilities and it's basically impossible to refactor it to include all the features that it doesn't support right now. And so that's why Wayland was started in 2008. The goal was to have a much simpler display model with less code, less risks of vulnerabilities and something that could be evolved to support all the things X11 could never support. In terms of advantages, the latency between a user action and its result on screen is much reduced. It basically eliminates screen tearing, it lets you have multiple monitors with different refresh rates and different scaling factors, and while it doesn't support HDR yet, it's currently being worked on. Other advantages include better security. On X11, any app can access any keystroke or any click you make. Not so on Wayland. Basically, X11 has zero keylogger protection and one such protection cannot be implemented due to how X11 is designed. And there are other smaller things like good support for touchscreen and touchpad gestures, Wayland being able to rotate a window, or X11 not being able to start a screensaver or lock screen if you have a menu open. Another main difference is that in X11, the X server handles most of the operations. So the window manager that actually lets you interact with your windows can be pretty minimal. On Wayland, the window manager, also called compositor, has to implement a lot of the protocols, which means developing a Wayland compositor is a lot more work. Although there are solid implementations like WL roots that you can base your work on. But it also meant that the whole Linux desktop stack had to be adapted from graphics drivers to toolkits to desktops to windows to applications. Everything had to be reworked a bit to support the Wayland protocols instead of X11, which is why Wayland isn't the only thing we're using right now. So let's look at the state of Wayland in 2023. So first, the Wayland protocol, the set of instructions you can use in your window manager, doesn't support everything X11 does. The main offender being network transparency. 
Wayland doesn't support running a program on a computer and displaying it on another. That's a relatively niche use case, but if you rely on it and remote desktop protocols or VNC don't work for you, then Wayland can't work for you. Some stuff also isn't supported yet on Wayland or on X11, for example, HDR. Linux desktops are a bit late to the party on that front, and even though there's a first implementation in SteamOS with the GameScope compositor developed by Valve, a complete implementation of color profiles, color management, and HDR on our Linux desktops is a few years away. Support for fractional scaling, so scaling your display size to 125%, for example, has just recently been added and isn't fully supported by all major Linux desktops and toolkits just yet. Wayland also doesn't support global shortcuts by default, which means an app running in the background can't receive specific shortcuts if it is not in focus. Now there is a desktop portal for that, portals being basically the implementation of stuff that were baked inside of the X server before, but that have really no place being in the display server and should be handled externally. So portals are basically bringing back some features that X11 had and that the Wayland protocols don't really have natively. Now we need to look at desktop environments and window managers. Gnome is probably the one with the more robust Wayland support available right now. It's not the most feature complete, but it is the most solid. Mutter, the GNOME compositor, works perfectly with Wayland these days. It's stable, it supports one-to-one -one touchpad and touchscreen gestures, plus gestures inside of applications to go back and forward, thanks to GTK4 also supporting Wayland well. Fractional scaling support was merged in GTK in early 2023, although fractional scaling is still considered experimental in GNOME and has to be enabled manually or by the distro itself. Generally, Wayland on GNOME is a really solid experience. On KDE, Wayland support is a bit less solid in my experience. Plasma 5.27 is decent enough, but real complete Wayland support will come to Plasma 6 in February 2024. Nothing seems to be missing right now, as you also get good gestures, fractional scaling, and a relatively smooth experience, but stability isn't fully there yet, notably with Kwin, the compositor. When it crashes under Wayland, it will kill all your currently open apps. This should be fixed in Plasma 6, but for now it is a real issue. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, it really hurts. So for now, I would say Wayland on KDE is okay, but not as good as on GNOME. As per other desktop environments, work has either just started or hasn't started at all. Well, just as I was editing this video today, Linux Mint released a blog post indicating that they have actually started work for Wayland and that an experimental session will be coming soon, although it will not become the default for a long, long while. XFC has published a roadmap of the things that already work and the things that need to be worked on. Pantheon, the desktop for elementary OS, has an experimental Wayland session that is, for now, not really usable, and Deepin doesn't seem to have any plans yet. Budgie will move to Wayland only with Budgie 11, but that's probably a few years away. So, for now, to use Wayland, it's either GNOME or KDE or a tiling window manager. You can use Sway, which is basically i3 but made for Wayland with support for i3 config files. You have Hyperland based on the WL Roots implementation that seems to be the fastest moving tiling window manager for Wayland or stuff like Wayfire and a few others, but they seem less feature complete for now. And now we need to talk about your GPU because the brand of GPU that you have will define if Wayland can work for you or not. See, GPUs need drivers. Insane, I know. And these drivers can support Wayland well or not well. If you use open source drivers like the Mesa drivers for Intel and AMD GPUs or the Nuvo driver for Nvidia, you're all good. These support everything you need and work well with Wayland just as well as on x.org. But then there are the proprietary Nvidia drivers. And to be fair, they do work with Wayland. It took a long while, but it works. I've been using them on hybrid graphics laptops, on GNOME and KDE, and on a desktop running Fedora for a long while, and it works. But it's also not the best experience. 
For example, variable refresh rates aren't supported yet using the NVIDIA drivers on Wayland. Nor is VR-related stuff, changing the gamma of the display. Or even the NVIDIA control panel, which offers virtually no features on Wayland. G-Sync works, but not for apps using X Wayland, which we'll talk about in a minute. So you can still use those drivers, even on hybrid graphics devices, and it will work, but it is not as stable as with X.org yet. Now, generally on Linux, unless you absolutely need to use an NVIDIA GPU, for example, for CUDA or for some OpenCL support and stuff like that, then you should stay away from NVIDIA and you should use an AMD or an Intel GPU. But if you want to use Wayland, then definitely do not use NVIDIA. It works, but it is not the best experience. And since we're talking about GPUs, let's talk about gaming. Gaming on Wayland basically relies on X.org with something called X Wayland. It's an X11 server running inside of Wayland. This is necessary because most gaming on Linux relies on Wine and Proton today by running the Windows version of the app through a compatibility layer. And Proton and Wine don't support Wayland natively. X Wayland works really well and it's really transparent. You will never notice that you're not running the game natively, but there is a small performance impact depending on the game. It's not huge, but it's there. So if you're struggling to keep a smooth 60 FPS, X.org will be better. This is notably true with Nvidia drivers, which do not handle X Wayland very well. Now, native Wayland support is being worked on right now for Wine. So in the future, we won't need X Wayland at all, and it's gonna work much better. But for now, it's a necessity and it can create some small performance problems, especially for NVIDIA GPUs. On AMD, you shouldn't really notice anything, but there's still the issue of vSync. For now, most implementations of Wayland in GNOME or KDE enforce vSync everywhere, unless your monitor has adaptive sync, so stuff like G-Sync or FreeSync. If you don't have that, then vSync is for now mandatory. And this means added latency and input lag in games. This will also get fixed soon with patches for various compositors that let full screen apps disable vSync, but for now, vSync is mandatory. So yeah, you can game under Wayland. I personally do it with a G-Sync compatible monitor and it works relatively well, but it's not the best experience. Some benchmarks seem to point to the fact that when Wayland is supported natively by Wine, Proton and Linux games, then performance will surpass the one on X11, but for now, you're gonna take a small performance hit, and so if you're an avid gamer and you want the best experience, you should stick to x.org. And finally, we have application support, because yes, not every app supports Wayland well. It all depends on the toolkit or framework they use. The toolkit needs to support Wayland itself. Every modern app using a recent version of GTK or Qt will support Wayland perfectly. All the latest Kirigami apps for KDE or relatively recent Qt 5 or Qt 6 apps will handle Wayland well, and they will handle all the portals that they need to interact with other applications, with screen sharing and the like. Electron apps using a recent version of Electron will also support Wayland and portals, but a lot of Electron apps still use an old version that doesn't support it properly and will run under X Wayland, which locks them out of a few features, notably screen sharing. And older apps using GTK2 or older versions of Qt also will not support Wayland. GIMP, for example, still uses GTK2 and as such can only run using X Wayland. GIMP 3 will support Wayland natively though, and it shouldn't be that far off. Some web browsers also don't run natively with Wayland. Firefox, by default, will run using X Wayland, but you can force it to run under Wayland natively with a variable, same for Chromium-based browsers. Now, to be clear, this doesn't mean that apps that don't support Wayland will not run. They will run, and they will work mostly perfectly using X Wayland, but some features will not be supported, most importantly, screen sharing, unless you use the X Wayland video bridge developed by some KDE developers that lets you basically pass through the screen sharing from X Wayland to Wayland, so it kind of fixes the issue, but there might be some other small problems here and there. Which leads us to the end of this video. I will not ask the usual question. 
is Wayland ready? Because it all depends on what you do on your device. If you rely on X11's network transparency, then no, it's not ready and it will never be. If you use NVIDIA drivers, it works, but it's not the best. If you use anything other than Sway, Hyperland, Gnome or KDE, then no, it's not ready for you. If you need the absolute best performance in games, then no, it's not ready. But if you just want to use your computer and sometimes you're okay with fixing an issue once to make sure that the app runs as it's supposed to work, then yes, Wayland will work for you. Personally, I've been using Wayland only for more than a year on Fedora GNOME and now on Tuxedo OS with KDE, with Nvidia GPUs, AMD GPUs, and all the small issues I encountered I could fix in one command line. So for me, it is ready. The small issues I have encountered and fixed were, to me, a small price to pay for low latency desktop use, for better battery life, for touchpad gestures, for avoiding screen tearing problems, and for the knowledge that I'm using what everyone will use in the future. Because whether Wayland is ready for your use case right now or not, there is no world in which any dev team picks up X11 and starts fixing it or maintaining it or adding new features. And there is no world in which the major Linux desktops don't drop X11 support at some point in the future. Basically, the Linux desktop will rely on Wayland exclusively at some point or another. Now, whether that point is now or later only depends on you. And it only depends on me to tell you about our sponsor. If you're planning to replace your current computer and you want to run Linux on it, stop looking at devices that only come with Windows pre-installed and crossing your fingers and hoping that your favorite distro will run well and wasting lots of time fixing issues. Buy something that supports Linux out of the box from our sponsor, Tuxedo. They have a big range of devices, from laptops to NUCs to towers, for gaming, for office work, whatever you need. All devices have hardware specifically picked for its compatibility with Linux. And if there were some quirks or some problems on these devices, they submit patches upstream to fix those issues for everyone, not just them. They're based in Germany, but they ship to most countries in the world and all their laptops can be opened, repaired and upgraded. And you have a bunch of customization options like having your own custom keyboard layout, your own custom logo on the lid of your laptop and more. I only use Tuxedo devices right now. My laptop, my editing station, uh, which are the same device, is a Tuxedo laptop and my SteamOS console is a Tuxedo Cube Tower PC. So if you need a new computer and you want to run Linux on it, click the link in the description below and get yourself a PC from Tuxedo. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to click the notification bell, to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, you can always click that thumbs down button and let me know in the comment section as well. And if you really enjoyed the channel and you want to support it, there are plenty of links to do just that in the video description. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.